check it out guys beautiful day downtown Vancouver and very classic uh, Vancouver it's it's raining sort of drizzling but I mean I just think it's so beautiful and I'm getting a chance to look at the Ness Rua this is a folding electric bike part of what makes it unique is that it's got these pretty wide solid alloy fenders You've got a rack with a spring latch an independent rear light which means it runs on AA batteries it's not hooked up to the main battery a little bit easier to forget and have it run out of batteries and you just there's more screwing around but at least you have it you know you've also got an integrated front light so that's the blaze light hl 1700 really nice mounted to the front so when you steer it points where you go zoom aria not the world's nicest suspension fork but it does have preload adjust and to be honest with you i mean it, i think it's about 35 40 millimeters of travel and it felt good i was riding it over here it's it's not so some suspension it just feels cheap uh this one actually felt pretty good even though it sort of is cheap zoom is that's one of the cheaper brands and this bike has disc brakes 160 millimeter mechanical you know it's just kind of we got a float plane taking off down there. That's cool. I'll try to show that when they do, when they finally go. 160 millimeters, disc brakes. You know, they stay out of the way a little bit, a little bit cleaner, maybe, you know, better protected if you were actually in wet, dirty environments than uh, rim brakes would be that kind of get wet and squeak and start to rub stuff into your rims. These rims are really nice, colorful yellow accents. I'm told they're magnesium. They could be aluminum alloy, but in any case, stronger than if you have spokes and the smaller diameter wheels tend to be stronger anyway for supporting uh, more weight they're not as comfortable spokes can kind of bend and flex whereas these are just you know rock solid and another strength accessory they've got here is a steel derailleur guard so see if the bike tips over the motor power cable is right here and so is the derailleur and this is a tourney it's like the base level in the shimano line but you get seven gears 14 to 28 that's fine, especially for riding around town. 52 tooth chain ring with a chain guide, plastic guide. That's gonna keep your pants from getting, you know, snagged on the, the chain and dirtied and stuff. And if you're on bumpy terrain and you're using that twist throttle, sometimes the chain can kind of bounce off. Having that chain guide is a big deal. And I, I really love that they have that. I actually think the drivetrain on this is perfect because you have to balance like price versus quality. Like that's always a trade off. And this is only $13.95. To me, that's a really good price for a folding electric bike with some of those little extras, the lights, the fenders, the racks, all that stuff. You know, they, they chose pretty well. And the battery is is quite, quite large, 42 volts, 13 amp hours. And usually I'm saying 36 volts or 48 volts. I'm not used to saying 42. So this might be a little inflated, but I looked at the manufacturer spec. That's what it says. The guys from the company told me, yeah, it's Samsung cells. Uh, weighed it, it's like 7.5 pounds, silverfish battery design that keeps the weight sort of low and center, frees up the rack, gives you more space back here for panniers or a bag. Good, good stuff. So 350 watt internally geared motor, it's inside that, that wheel. And so it's pretty well protected and, and hidden. I like that this bike, it has the black and it all matches, comes in a bunch of different colors. So we've got the yellow accents. They also have red, they also have orange, white, black. It's, it's quite a range to sort of customize it. And this is their maybe a bit more masculine mid-step design. So it's still not super high to get your foot up and over. And you can see that they've reinforced and almost got like a handle there for once it's folded. But they also have the icon. This is their step through, like a little bit lower, easier to step through, wavier design, still very strong, still has those reinforced wheels and everything. It's just, a, a, it's, it's a maybe a little bit more feminine, white colors with the same accents, okay? So white with yellow, white with orange, white with red, white with white, white. They even have one with like a pink kind of logo right here, which is very feminine. Um, and this one, I noticed that the cabling routes through the frame a little bit cleaner. Whereas this one, the cabling is just tacked on to the bottom. So I don't, you know, it kind of comes back to style preference and colors and stuff, but otherwise these bikes are, are very comparable. Love that it's got like a 900 uh, millimeter like stem kind of thing here. I guess this is like a headset and, and then the stem is up here, but it's telescoping zero to 90 millimeters for uh, additional rise. Ergonomic grips, non-locking, that means they can kind of twist on you a little bit cheaper. This is the Shimano SIS Index. I call it a thumb shifter because you reach over with your thumb. Bigger, 
not quite as elegant as like the little trigger shifters down here. But if you're wearing gloves, sometimes the precision isn't as easy. So these are big and easy to reach. These, because they're mechanical brakes, the levers aren't adjustable reach or anything. And again, 160 millimeters, it might, it is a little bit kind of standard or smaller. It's not mountain bike size. And these days everyone's trying to bigger and hydraulic and better. But you keep in mind, the diameter of these wheels is smaller. You don't need huge brakes to stop them. And you don't need a super powerful motor, especially a hub motor, to, to have a mechanical advantage because it's turning a smaller wheel. Same thing with the gear range. Like, I really think they've, they've hit a sweet spot here in terms of price and the quality of their components. You can see the chain. This looks like a nicer chain. Uh, I don't know as much about them, but it looks like it's stainless steel, maybe even a little bit stronger for e-bike riding, which is almost unnecessary because the drivetrain doesn't have anything to do with the motor. You can shift gears and it's it's not like you're encountering the same forces. 12 magnet cadence sensor right here. And I'm gonna to try to show you from the other side. You can see those magnets. As they pass the sensor, that activates pedal assist in which there are zero through five, five different levels to choose from. And it works pretty well. And there's throttle override. So while you're riding, if you need a little extra help or you just wanna take a break, you can do the throttle. But unfortunately, it doesn't work at level zero. There's no throttle only mode. And the throttle is limited by the assist level you choose. So if you're on one, the throttle is gonna be kind of weak and you're limited on top speed. You need to arrow up to level five. Thankfully, that display is fairly easy to reach. And I wanna call out the integrated bell on those zoom levers and the motor inhibitors. So at any time, if you're getting a little carried away or pedal assist isn't responding or you're, you just need to stop, you pull that brake lever, it kills the motor system. So it's, it's, it's really nice. They're using a lot, you know, a lot has done, has been done well here. I've got a pretty standard um, sort of a folding joint here. You, you do have to line it up a little bit to kind of, to get that plastic piece to, to fit in there and actually lock it. It, it. That's one complaint I have. The width here isn't terrible. Some people talk about banging their knees uh, when it's a really big joint. This is another little cheaper joint. It works, you tighten it and stuff, but it's not quite as locking and, you know, there's no extra like security, like slider. This is just part of it that's cheaper. Quick release up here, quick release on the front wheel. So you could take that off to reduce weight along with the battery. No quick release on the back because the motor and everything's all, all built in. So just keep those things in mind. Also the pedal well goes, these are plastic folding. I'm not as big a fan of this style. You kind of have to push in like this. There are some that have a finger lever inside or maybe they're alloy, they're a little bit stiffer, but you know, the bike folds and this makes it a little more compact. I'm gonna fold it a little bit later, but I have measured like the, the reach, standover height, even the length and the folded dimensions back at the website. So you can get an idea of whether this will fit in your, your RV or your boat or whatever. At 52.2 pounds, this is kind of the same weight as a full size electric bike, which always surprises me. It's like, seems smaller. It seems like, yeah, compact. Well, yeah, size wise it is. Weight wise, you're not saving a lot in large part because of those alloy fenders, which tend to be sturdy. But if you if you kick it or whatever, they, they can bend a little bit, but they won't rust the way that steel fenders will. I do like that the seat right here, there's a little lever on the back. You can flip it up so you can pull that battery off at any time without pulling up the seat and everything. This is 28.6 millimeter seat post diameter as well. So if you wanted to get an extra long seat post, I mean, I don't know if you'd, if you'd be a pretty tall person. The minimum insertion height is marked somewhere down here. So, you know, look at this, like we raise that and raise that. This could go pretty high, kind of ridiculously high, but if you're someone who has those extra long legs, these are standard 170 millimeter crank arms and, and you can work within this. Here's the charging port. Battery can be charged on or off the bike. Unfortunately, to take the battery off, you do have to unlock it down here like this and then pull the key out. Cause if you don't, the key will bang onto those seat stays. And then you can pull up the battery like this. You know, it's, it's just, I guess, you know, that's an extra step. I'll go ahead and lock this again. You could forget to lock it and it could be vibrating when you're riding. So make sure you lock it. Then you plug this in again click it to on, you can't take the keys out. So when I'm, I'm riding, I notice there's some jingling going on. This is old school kind of setup technology. That's part of what keeps it cheap. And at least it's high capacity. Do have a battery level indicator over here, but it's also a two-step on off process. Click it to on. Then you come back up here, click this to on. Display comes to life. You can turn on the headlight and the backlighting here by holding up. And there's a little light icon. 
You can also hold up and down right after you turn the bike on to get to settings and you can change the wheel diameter and speed adjustment a little bit. You can also change it from kilometers per hour to miles per hour if you want. Battery indicator, four bars. We got a timer, assist level. It starts in level one, but zero would just run your light and you'd use this like a little cycle computer. Speed, distance, if you press the power button in the middle, it goes to like your odometer and then there's trip time and average speed and then voltage and then up here max speed. So there's quite a bit on this display and I feel like it's pretty compact, seems to be water resistant. They do offer a one year comprehensive warranty with five years on the frame. So it's kind of standard. They've been around for a couple years now, you know, it's some brothers and they got into e-bikes and traveled abroad and in Tel Aviv, Israel, it's like, okay, cool. There's more and more people riding these bikes and they kind of designed one that fit their own needs and price point. Um, and I, I feel like they've done a, a pretty good job. So that's a, that's a good little overview. I'm gonna slide this seat down. There we go, great. And stow that kickstand. I should say the kickstand does collide a little bit, just a little bit. And when the bike's not actually resting on it, you can just push past like that, but it starts to nick it up a little bit. So it's one of the complaints. It's nice to have the kickstand further back, but some of these frames just don't really accommodate that. Hey, I'm standing on this thing. I'm gonna take it to level three and we'll watch and listen for that cadence sensor. Pretty nice. You know, gets you going. It's definitely a, a, a pretty comfortable bike with that suspension in the front. And then part because these wheels are a little bit fatter. So um, yeah, had to work for a second to get that cadence sensor going. Let's take it up to five. Very nice. And then this is, of course, now I can do throttle I think even from standstill. Yeah, just twist it and the bike goes. Top speed, 20 miles per hour. Not too bad. Coming back down to these tires, 20 by 1.75. So just a little bit fatter than normal. Gives you a little bit of that comfort. And there's a decent PSI rating range on this as well. So it's 40 to 65. Lower PSI is gonna be more comfortable, but if you're heavy, you need to make sure it's not too low or you can get pinch flats going on in there. So I got some help folding the bike here. Still the kickstand. Got the center section going on. Oh, and I wanted to call out down here, there's another support bar. So just like that derail your guard you've got something to rest on so that this plastic chain guide doesn't get messed up we just folded the pedals folding it in half there we go and then this lever is adjustable i noticed so over time you can kind of tighten that up if it's getting loose there's the resting point down there really nice you can see that the frame comes together over here pretty close a couple contact points are the frame and then this plastic nub at the end of the skewer so it shouldn't bang up too much of course i i like to bring like a zip or well not a zip tie but like a, a bungee cord or something just so that the wheel doesn't flop over like that kind of keeps it folded in your car and not rattling too much got the handlebars and then of course the seat post would be the last thing to go down and you get that that really really low and compact portability. Guys, I think that's about it. I've had fun looking at the Nest Rua, and I was talking to the founders, and they're like, oh, that means street in Portuguese, and this has worked really well, you know, hanging out. A little bit of city, a little bit of coastal today. For the full written review, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com with all those details. Of course, have fun out there, ride safe, stay dry.